the goal, this is a couple, this twofold thing. Number one, we want to support this ministry. Number two, I would love for you guys to feel some ownership about serving with this place uh, and uh, also see and understand the importance of giving and supporting ministries that are doing good things, okay? So here's what we're doing. Ready? We partnered with them. And my request to you guys is very simple. We want $100 per month, not from everyone, not from each of you individually, talking about total, okay? So this is just something to keep in your mind. As you come on Sundays or Wednesdays and you have, you know, a couple of dollars that you feel like would be good to give to serve these people at the food and clothing co-op, then, then put it back there in that. At the end of the month, what I'll do is I'll take the money and count it with Caitlin. Okay, it's not going to be me by myself counting it and stealing your money. And then we're going to take it out to the Grand Prairie Food and Clothing Co-op. And again, this money is from the student ministry at Matthew Rebecca Church supporting the ministry out there uh, in North Grand Prairie. Okay? Yes, Miss Allison. Math. Amen. Hey, make it two and we've got over the hundred. There you go. So two bucks a week for, for only, I need like one of those, the music going in the background for only $2. You can, actually not, not a great joke, but uh, we're going to support the Grand Prairie Food and Clothing Co-op. Okay. Give as you can, give as you feel led, but this is something that I want you guys to support. Uh, and anything we have short of that $100 goal, we will cover. Uh, but I really want you guys to do this. If you go to the next slide, there's a couple other ways you can serve with this place. So you can volunteer there. In fact, I went out today and talked to Mr. Jose, and Mr. Jose told me that he's like, man, I would love for you guys to come back out here sometime this summer. The front of their building, y'all remember how kind of like it looks a little bit kind of like dingy, you know? Yeah. yeah just a little, so yeah, he wants, he, he was like, I would love for you guys to come out and help and paint. Like there's just, they need like the front of the building painted. And so he's like, could y'all come out one day and help maybe? I was like, yeah, that'd be awesome. So we're going to try to set that up where we can go out there and serve. So that's one way. The other thing is you don't just have to donate money. Uh, you, you can, and I, I'd love for you to, but you can also donate any of these things. These are the regular donate items. And um, so here's what I'm going to do. And also this, clothes. If you guys, you guys are growing, you guys are going in clothes and out of clothes. It's a transitional period. So if you have clothes that you don't need anymore, you don't wear anymore, but are not in terrible shape, okay, uh, then bring those up here too. And here's what we'll do. You can put the money in the box, and then you can also put these things or clothes or lightly used shoes or whatever back there also and let me know that it's there. And each month when I take the money, I'll take whatever donations we have as well up there, okay? And they'll know, like, they'll just know that this is from the students at Matthew or Baptist Church, okay? So it's a really cool way for y'all to partner with them and for y'all to serve. And if you go to the next slide, you'll see a picture of us there. Actually, it's like a, a collage of pictures. Look at this. This is all the different. You remember that, that lady? Remember when she almost fell? Classic. She almost fainted right in front of us. True story. I went and talked with her today. She's super sweet still. Actually, she, she had me go talk to her husband because her husband was sitting in the back by himself. <laughs> yeah, it was fun. So, yeah, this is the place I'm talking about. And um, I'm pretty sure, too, that our name is going to be on that sign because we're partnering with them like this. So, yeah, it's just a cool way for us to partner up with this ministry, okay? And also, Jose's a church member. So, like, it's cool to, to support his ministry. Yeah. He goes to the early service, which most of y'all have never snipped. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Yes. I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll get something set up for that. Yeah, we'll work it out. All right, guys. So that is, that is one announcement I want you guys to be mindful of. The next thing is, drum roll, please. Youth camp. Okay. Uh, I think most everybody in this room has signed up for youth camp. <laughs> say, it, say it louder for the people in the back. Yeah. Anyways. So youth camp's coming up. Hey, we have about three spots open for youth camp. We have about three spots open. So if you would like to go, I need to know. Okay? If you would like to go, I need to know. Yes, you are signed up. Yes. Okay? I have about three more spots. Please reach out ASAP. Next slide. 
We had the mission trip. Hey, actually, y'all know how I'm always like, hey, we need more guys. Yesterday, we had a guy sign up. So there you go. So, uh, but we have three more spots for this also. So if you want to go on the mission trip, there's still time for this. Uh, again, $150. So the price has been decreased by our missions committee who's supporting this. So praise the Lord for that. But if you guys want to join us for the mission trip or camp, let me know ASAP as possible. Hey, um, girls, Emily, you you went on the mission trip last year. Who else? Who else? Did? Oh, and Danae. So April's coming on the mission trip. Yeah, she's coming on the mission trip. So there you go. Danae's coming on the mission trip. Yeah. Lance still chickened out, dude. All right. We have no. We have some. Oh, right now. Uh, so we have some guys coming now. Yeah, we have we have three. We have three guys. If more guys want to sign up, then that'd be awesome. High school. All right. Hey, let me pray for us real quick. I don't normally do this before we go into worship, but let me pray for us. Okay. Can I do that? You wear my hat. All right, let's pray. Dear God, thanks for who you are. Thank you for the opportunity to gather tonight in your name. God, I pray your blessings over our time of fellowship. Help us to learn more about your word. Help us to learn more about you. God, we just, uh, we pray now that you bless this time of worship. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
bow your heads. Dear Lord, thank you for this day. Thank you for allowing us to come here to fellowship in your name, to uh, learn about you, to come together to worship you, worship all your glory. Uh, I pray that as we go throughout tonight that we would learn a lot and that we would learn how to apply it to our lives um, as we're going through this study to prepare for uh, Youth Led Sunday. I pray that we'd pay attention to Joe's teaching so that we might draw from it and just uh, be able to preach from your word 
um, all we know that all your words are good and useful for teaching, Lord. I pray that you would just speak through us as we um, study your word and teach it to others. In your holy name I pray. Amen. Amen. All right, so, hey, y'all grab a Bible real quick. Grab a Bible and, uh, is that a fidget spinner? Grab a Bible and a fidget spinner if you need one or want one. Um, Man, this week, hey, Judah actually asked me about that, if he could pray or if if somebody from the band could pray, and so I thought that was awesome. I failed to talk to him about it until when he was on their uh, stage about to drum, and I was like, he was like, okay. So, yeah, that's on me, but hey, man, that was awesome. Thank you for doing that, Judah. All right, so Youth Led Sunday, May twenty first, uh, May twenty eighth. Sorry. Um, so here's the thing about this: if you're going to serve, and uh, it seems like a lot of y'all are, and that's awesome. Um, if you're going to serve, need y'all to. I, I mentioned this last week, but I need y'all to make sure that you're here for these next couple Wednesday nights leading up to it, and that you can commit to being here that first Sunday, Observation Sunday. So that's May twenty first, and then also the uh, 28th, which is Youth Led Sunday. Can somebody quiet that kid, please? What's going on back there? Oh, my bad. He's, well, he's kind of annoying, so. Oh, oh, yeah, my bad. I can't say that, can I? Yes, Miranda. You know, that's a good idea. Would you like to? Okay, yeah. I hadn't even thought about that, but that's awesome. She asked if the youth could work the coffee bar. That's awesome, huh? That's a great idea, yeah. Except for like, you know, don't burn anyone with a coffee. Do what? Oh, nice. Yeah, so there are a lot of different places to serve that Sunday. So uh, we're going to have our praise band for sure up on the stage leading in worship um, on the music side. That'll be cool. Uh, You know, you people who like to do the tech booth stuff, we have... An opportunity for y'all to be in the tech booth as well. Um, we have, okay, you know how people open the doors and greet? Okay, we need people to be there for the 8.30 service and the 11 a.m. service to greet people, to welcome them in, okay? So like, we, need some, we need some greeters. Evidently, the coffee bar, that's a great idea. I don't know how I didn't think of that. It's awesome. Um, and then obviously in the classes as well, like teaching Bible studies and those types of things. So need y'all to, uh, to be ready. It's going to be fun. Yes. Yeah, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna line out where everyone will be probably next week, so we'll we'll get that. Oh, what what Bible study we'll be teaching? Actually, me and Jennifer still haven't like fully decided on that yet. So it's either gonna be what we're doing in here, the the Mary and Martha just geared towards little children, or it's going to be um, their Bible study. And and either way, you'll see the teacher uh, teach the week before, so you'll know exactly what's being you know, what's coming up next in their Bible story. You'll have it for the week to, to study it and get ready for it and stuff. So yeah, it'll be good. It's a good question. Okay. So let's read the text real quick. And then here's what I'm going to do. Okay. This is kind of an outline. It's, it's really long. It won't be this long, I promise. But this is kind of an outline of some information that you might need for leading the Bible study. And I'll give you, I'll give you a lot of background info. I'll give you a lot of like the full scope of this passage because I want you guys to have all that you need, uh, but then I'll give you something smaller that you can actually like teach off of, you know, so you don't have to have like four pages of information with you whenever you go in there. That could get a little bit cumbersome, you know. So um, here's the thing. This is a really beautiful story. We've been through it last week. Uh, there's some other things, there's some other aspects of this that I want to consider tonight. And what I'm going to do is kind of go through what you might do as you lead a Bible study, specifically geared towards adults or college age or whatever, but this is what it might look like for you, uh, at least vaguely, what it might look like for you as you kind of lead this Bible study. Um, There's some things that you'll want to be aware of whenever you're leading a Bible study. You know, sometimes conversation is a really good thing. Like, if you ask a question and people get to talking about it and have really good input and insight and stuff, and they're like really good conversations going on, that's awesome because it does two things. One, it gets people engaged, and two, it means you don't have to talk quite as much, okay? So, uh, and that's what we want to, you you don't want to just stand up there and lecture a bunch of, you know, 70-year-olds, do you? 
I, no, I didn't think so. Uh, so you'll have some question and answers and those types of things. It'll be fun. But let's read the text real quick, and then we'll kind of look at some stuff, okay? Now, as they went on their way, Jesus entered a village, and a woman named Martha came, uh, welcomed him into her house, and she had a sister called Mary who sat at the Lord's feet and listened to his teaching. Uh, I forgot I can't just change by clicking the button. Uh, but Martha was distracted with much serving, and she went up to him and said, Lord, do you not care that my sister has left me to serve alone? Tell her then to help me. But the Lord answered her, Martha, Martha, you are uh, anxious and troubled about many things, but one thing is necessary. Mary has chosen the good portion, which will not be taken away from her. Okay, so here's what we're doing tonight. So look, student led Sunday, youth led Sunday, whatever, however you want to call it, either way. You don't have to take super detailed notes tonight because, like I said, you're going to have this information uh, as soon as next Wednesday night, okay? I will give you a piece of paper that looks very much like this one. It won't be this one, but it'll look very much like it. Uh, so you can take notes. I encourage you to stay engaged. If you want to stay engaged by writing things down, then do that. But I'm probably not going to, like, go back to a slide if you didn't get it all written down, Okay. So there you go. So here's kind of an outline. So first thing that you're going to do when you get in there, everybody's seated, ready to get started, this is what I want you to do. You're going to look at somebody, the teacher probably, and you're going to say, okay, we're good to go. And they're going to say, we've been waiting for 20 minutes. Go ahead. You know, no, I'm just kidding. They'll say, yes, go ahead. And this is what you're going to do. Ready? Very simple. Introduce yourself. First steps, pretty important. So here's what you think of the thing like this. Name, what's your name or name you want to tell them? Uh, what school do you go to? What grade are you in? And favorite thing about Matthew Road or favorite thing about youth ministry, favorite thing about school? I don't care. Tell them something fun about yourself and, you know, whatever that is, okay? So and just introduce yourself. So my name's Joseph. You can call me Star Lord. I'm not saying, uh, my school is Megamind. <laughs> oh, dude. My heart burns with anger, and also like I feel like kind of thank you. Like that was kind of that was kind of nice. So, and I love you, random citizen. I love that movie. All right. Anyways, no <laughs> true So good. Uh, I'm just sitting here thinking about Mega Mind quotes now. Why did you do that, Edward? Ah, uh, yes, Spider. <laughs> okay, okay. All right, I'm done. Anyways. Um, yeah, introduce yourself. Okay, next thing. Here's a good question to start with, especially when we're going into this, this topic. Have you ever heard the saying, too much of a good thing is a bad thing? Have you ever heard that? Raise your hand. Okay, here, too much of a good thing is a bad thing? You ever heard that? Okay, here's some, here's some uh, great illustrations you can use. I love, Joseph, you can use me as an illustration. I don't care. I love ice cream so much. Like, just, I love it. It's, it's the best thing. And so I have a time or two in my life eaten too much ice cream. And, you know, you get a little bellyache. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it's, a gr it's not even just a good thing. It's a great thing. But too much of it, man, it's, it's not good. You know what I mean? Like, it just, your belly hurts. Like, too much sugar. You can't go to sleep that night. Then when you do go to sleep, you have really weird dreams. It's a whole thing. And so too much of a good thing can be a bad thing. Uh, that doesn't directly necessarily apply to this story, but here's the thing. Martha in this story, we read it already, we went through it last week. Martha in this story is doing good things. She's serving, she's hosting, she literally welcomed Jesus and his disciples into her home. The way that this is written, it's like she went out of her way to invite them in. Like that's what she wanted to do. Uh, she wanted to host. Like these are, these are inherently good things. But what happened was those good things, like spending time doing good things, good works even, those good things uh, ended up kind of leading her to being distracted and not really thinking so much about maybe Jesus or especially not thinking so much about her sister and instead just thinking about herself and how hard the service is that she's doing, right? Uh, and kind of led her to this attitude, this anger. So a good thing, right? Serving, um, ministering, feeding people. That's great. That's awesome. But in her case, she kind of went a little bit, a little bit far. Okay. So here are some other things that you'll want to know as you kind of get into this. Um, what is some background information? 
I can't, why won't it change the slides, man? Come on. John, skip two, skip two ahead. So, um, what's some background information? That is one. Go two. There we go. Uh, background information, okay? So, who's the author? You know which book of the Bible we're in? Pretty good hint on who the author is. Not Paul. It's a good guess, Caleb. Uh, yeah, what's your, what's your name, sir? Oh, I'm sorry. Can you say that again? Luke. So who's the author? No, you imbecile. No. It's Luke. Luke. And she's, she's really smart. Actually, I have a plan. All right. Uh, who is the author? It is Luke. Okay. And uh, go to the next slide. Ready? Here we go. It's okay. You'll, you'll see all of these again. I promise. Okay. Luke, he's a companion of Paul. Okay. You know this. Did you know that Luke was not present during the ministry of Jesus? Luke? Luke yeah. Luke was actually not even Jewish. Luke was a, a Gentile. And uh, yeah, he was a really good historian though. He did a lot of, uh, he did a lot of interviews with people, eyewitness accounts, those types of things. And he used some really good source material because he used what was written in Mark and what was written in Matthew. It's very likely also that the gospel writers, especially these three gospel writers, the synoptic gospels, Matthew, Mark, and Luke, used another source while they wrote their gospels. I don't mean that in like a bad way, like they had other information flowing in that wasn't really about Jesus' life. I mean like there was probably someone or multiple people during Jesus' ministry, keeping really good records of things that were taking place. And when these gospel writers sat down to write, they probably had that source with them also. So Luke definitely used Matthew and Mark. There's like a lot of material from those two in his gospel. But he also did a lot of interviews with people. Does anybody know a way that you can tell that, that Luke did a lot of interviews with people? Do what? He named a lot of people, yes. His name's Luke. No, that doesn't really help him. Uh, uh, what's your guess? Yeah. Yeah, he had help from others. Yeah, well, especially because he wasn't there, we know that he probably had to interview a lot of people. But then there's this one really, really, really detailed story in Luke's gospel that's not quite as detailed in the other gospels. Do you know what it is? No, not the death. Go before. Yeah, his birth. So Luke had way more information on the birth of Jesus than anyone else had. Uh, he had also this information about the announcement to Elizabeth about John the Baptist. Remember that? That's not in the other Gospels. Yeah. His mom, Mary. That's what I'm saying. Luke probably interviewed Mary. That's what, like, that's what I'm saying. Like he had conversations with people who, I mean, like the things that he records Mary as like saying, it's like that's stuff that only like she would remember. You know what I mean? Like he, he interviewed a lot of people. He was really detailed with this stuff. Okay. So that's just good information for you there. Okay. The next question, who is the intended audience? I can't change it. Go ahead, John. Who is the intended audience? Um, the intended audience is generally just a Gentile audience, okay? Not Jewish, again, very different from uh, Matthew, uh, different from Mark. Um, Mark's gospel is trying to get the message out there. Matthew's gospel is trying to show how Jesus is the, the Jewish Messiah, the anointed one. Luke's gospel is different. Luke's gospel is trying to show how God, Jesus is the son of God who came to save the entire world. Right, like by his, like, like way, one way we can tell this in the genealogy, it doesn't stop at Abraham, like you might expect, because that's what happens in Matthew. He goes all the way down genealogy to traces Jesus's genealogy back to Adam, and then after he says Adam, it says the Son of God. There's a whole thing to show that Jesus is indeed the Son of God. Okay, so this is this is uh, his his intended audience, a Gentile audience to trust and know that Jesus is the Son of God who came to. Uh, to save the world, okay? All right, go to the next slide, John. What happened? Uh, where does this, okay, where does this passage fit into the gospel? So, okay, Luke is a really cool gospel because it's very similar to Matthew and Mark, but one thing that Luke does that the others don't do is he spends a really big portion of his gospel message with this kind of travel scenario, like travel story, okay? 
In Luke 9, Luke 9, 51 specifically, you can flip back a page or two and look at this. Jesus, it says that Jesus had his face turned towards Jerusalem, okay, when he was in Samaria. And from that point on, Luke 9, 51, through Luke 19, 28, when Jesus does, has the triumphal entry into Jerusalem, Luke's gospel is working its, its way on, uh, with Jesus all the way through and to Jerusalem, which is ultimately to the cross, okay? So this is very similar to what he does in Acts, the travel stories in Acts, you know, uh, Paul's uh, missionary work and all those kinds of things. So he traces this stuff. This is really, like, this is the way that Luke writes. So um, where does this play, where is this placed in Jesus's life? Okay, so on Sunday mornings, which book are we going through? Yes, I'm glad someone, <laughs> yeah. On Sunday mornings, Daniel's going through the Gospel of John. And there's this really important scene in the Gospel of John, which takes place from John 7 all the way through John 10. And it's this Feast of Tabernacles in Jerusalem. This story, the story of Mary and Martha, probably takes place after Jesus is there in Jerusalem for the Feast of Tabernacles and before Jesus goes back to Jerusalem for Hanukkah, which is also in John 10, just later. There's a gap of time there between those two things, and this is probably where um, the story that we're looking at today takes place. Okay? Does that kind of make sense? Does anyone, is anyone interested by that? I think it's kind of cool. All right. Uh, and then the next question is, what happened immediately before this? So for background and context, this is stuff, this is important stuff. So John, go to the next slide for me. What happened immediately before this? There's a really, really popular story that happened right before this. Uh, so uh, Luke 10 has some of the most familiar stuff that you'll ever find. Jesus sends out 72 disciples. They preach about the kingdom of God before Jesus comes into town. Uh, they come back and they're like, whoa, Jesus, even the demons listen to us. And Jesus is like, yeah, you know, that's great. It's because you're the, they're subject to me. Uh, and then he says to them that they should feel blessed for what they're witnessing and experiencing being with Jesus specifically. Um, and then the next thing that takes place uh, is, go to the next slide. You go ahead. Oh, it's already up there. No, it's actually, it's a good guess, but it's the Good Samaritan. Okay, this is Jesus, the parable of the Good Samaritan. Are you familiar with this parable? Who's, okay, who's the good guy in the story? The Samaritan. <laughs> yeah, okay. So the Good Samaritan, this is what happens literally right before this. It goes from Jesus having this conversation with a lawyer about uh, who is my neighbor. You remember that question? Okay, so if you go back here, Luke 10, 25, and behold, a lawyer stood up and uh, put him to the test saying, teacher, what shall I do to inherit eternal life? He said to him, what is written in the law? How do you read it? And he said, he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and soul, with all your mind and strength and your neighbor as yourself. And Jesus said, you know, you've answered correctly. You do this, you live. And then who was my neighbor? Okay, that's the question that sparks the parable of the good Samaritan. Okay. I really want you guys to understand that the good Samaritan takes place before this because it really is important to understand the context of Mary and Martha's story. So sometimes what happens is people take the story of Mary and Martha, kind of like what we did last week. I did it last week to introduce this, knowing I was going to give you more background information. But what happened with, with uh, what happens is people take Mary and Martha and they'll rip it out of Luke and they'll just say, this is a story about how you need to have a quiet time and also don't let yourself be too busy and like Martha's a bad person. You know what I mean? Like that's kind of like how this story gets told sometimes. But understanding it in the context of Luke's gospel is really important. Understanding that right after Jesus talks about being a neighbor, like essentially serving others, like how that's a good thing, Luke frames that with, also, like, don't serve, you know, frivolously. Don't serve frantically. Don't serve just to fill time. You should also pursue time with Christ and spend time with Christ. And that's why the story is, is placed where it's at. It's really important to kind of see that, um, especially for y'all as y'all teach this to people. I want y'all to be able to help people understand, like, it, it, like, Mary and Martha is not just a weird anecdote at the end of the Good Samaritan. Um, I think it's intentional. I think that, that, that it was, it's intentionally placed there, okay? So that's some background and context information, all right? You can go to the next slide, John. The next thing that, I, that you'll probably kind of do as you go through this thing is you want to bring up some other passages of Scripture that relate to this story, okay? So when you're talking about Mary and Martha, 
it's probably a good idea to go to the only other place in the Bible that they're talked about. Wouldn't you agree? Cool. So that's in John, John chapter 11 and John chapter 12. Okay. So there's verses that specifically uh, are, are, you know, about uh, Martha. Uh, and then there's verses that are specifically about Mary. And um, yeah, so that's just some important stuff that you can go look at. Okay. You find out some really interesting things in these passages, by the way, some things that like actually matter for uh like for them and, and their personalities and things like that. Like you learn some stuff about Martha and Mary as you read this story in Luke and that, and that whole, you know, episode there in John. Um, one of the things that happens is you see that John eleven twenty seven is one of the verses for Martha. You see that? Can somebody pull that up for me real quick? John eleven twenty four through 20 or somebody read John eleven twenty 20 through 27. Who wants to do it? Grace. Oh, do you have it? Okay, go ahead. Dale already had it pulled up. Sorry. Go ahead. John 11, uh, 20 through 27. Huh? 11, 20 through 27. So remember, well, set the scene. Lazarus, their brother, is dead. Okay, go ahead. Yep. Loud and proud. Um, okay, so that last verse there especially, but that whole scene, remember, their brother Lazarus is dead, and Martha goes out and she meets Jesus, and she's first thing she says is, man, if you had been here, Jesus would have, or my brother would still be alive, like he wouldn't have died. But even now I know that you, anything you ask of God, he'll give you. And then she goes on, and Jesus says, essentially, like, you know, do you believe that I can bring your brother back, that you'll see him again? And Mary, or Martha's response is amazing. It's, yes, I believe that you are the Son of God, right? Like, you're the Messiah, and the one that one that he sent from heaven. Okay, so uh, Martha gives one of the most profound, uh, complete statements about who Jesus is in during his ministry uh, from anyone recorded in Scripture. Okay, there's only one other person that I can think of. Correct me if I'm wrong. Only one other person that I can think of who says anything similar to this, and it's the Apostle Peter. Um, does anybody know what Peter says? Yeah, he says that. So Matthew 16, Jesus is there with his disciples, and he says, who do people say that I am? And they give all these answers. Elijah, you're a prophet, whatever. And then he says, but who do you say that I am? And what did Peter say? The Christ, the Son of God, right? So Martha said something very similar to what Peter said, but she even added that he's also this uh, another title for the messianic figure, okay? So Martha, like, look, when you're reading this story, like, don't just think that Martha didn't have any faith or anything like that, okay? Like, Martha, like, really clearly believed in Jesus, okay? Like, that's a profound statement. Uh, but you learn some other stuff about them as you read through these other stories. And there's another story that you can read. John, go to the go to two slides. Okay, so another story to look at is in the Gospel of Luke, Luke chapter 7. There's this Pharisee, his name's Simon. He invites Jesus and his disciples in the house. He doesn't, you know, welcome them. He doesn't greet them. He doesn't host them. He just sits down. Uh, this woman comes in and she, you know, pours perfume on Jesus' feet and washes it with her tears and with her hair. And, uh, and Simon gets mad. He's like, what is this lady doing here, you know? And Jesus actually rebukes Simon because he did not host Jesus well, okay? So this is really interesting because in the story of Mary and Martha, Martha is hosting Jesus really well. She's cleaning up, she's cooking, she's preparing, uh, she's serving is the word there. And then Mary is just sitting at Jesus' feet learning. And so like, it's interesting. Martha in the story gets kind of like, no, like 
Mary's doing a good thing. In this story with Simon, though, Simon wasn't doing anything, and he was also like in the wrong in the story. So it's, it's really interesting kind of how those two things will almost work together here. Um, but that's in Luke as well. So that's kind of important for, you know, for teaching this lesson also. You can go to the next slide, John. All right, so I'm going to give you a quick overview of this whole story real quick, okay? So Jesus is in Bethany. This is the village that he walks up to, this is village that he's visiting. Martha welcomes Jesus in, into their home. And um, so, so this, by the way, this welcomed Jesus into their home. This word welcome, it like received him into their home. Like, G, like Martha went out of her way, like she pursued them and invited them in. Like this is like kind of what is being stated here. Like she was wanting to uh, be hospitable, so she she welcomed them inside. Um, sometimes it's like a little bit simple. She welcomed Jesus. Like no, she like went out of her way and invited him to come, you know, eat at their house and probably even stay the night. Mary stopped helping and hosting as soon as Jesus got there. Uh, and she left Martha to go be with Jesus. Okay, go to the next slide. Hmm. Let's see here. So Luke describes, so here's a couple of things that Luke says about Martha. One, she's distracted, so she was preoccupied with other things. She was drawn away to do other stuff. And she also said that she was not distracted by bad things, but she was distracted by ministry. So he says here in... Luke 10, I think it's verse 40. I think it's verse 40. Um, let's see here. Uh, let's see. But Martha was distracted with much serving. That word serving or with uh, preparations or with with ministry, whatever, the word is literally the same word that we get deacons from. Like that's the type, like she was serving, okay? Like she was ministering. That was like literally, that's kind of the indication here. It was not a bad thing that she was drawn away to. It wasn't negative. It wasn't sinful. She was like doing ministry almost, right? Like serving Jesus. Okay, you can go to the next slide. And then Martha got angry. Okay, this is where like this kind of, this is where it goes south for Martha. She doesn't just, you know, she doesn't just want to uh, host Jesus. She's mad because her sister isn't serving with her. And so she really, it's the way that this is written. I just found this out as I was kind of doing some word study. She's like really abruptly went up to Jesus, like almost indignantly, like she was mad, at, like almost at Jesus, like it's kind of the idea. Like she went up to Jesus and was like, hey, wouldn't this go faster if my sister helped me? So tell her to help me. Uh, like when she also, when she said, so tell her then, to, uh, that's like an imperative, like she commanded it. Like Jesus, tell her, tell her to help me then, do it, you know? And, you know, that's probably not the right approach for Jesus. Uh so that, but that's kind of how Martha, that's like, she got angry. She got distracted. She got angry. You go to the next slide and you see Jesus' response. Um, if I have it there. No, I didn't. Okay, that's all good. Go back. So um, so you have the response from Jesus, which is that Martha, you know, you're getting distracted from stuff. There's only one thing that's necessary. It's time with me. Mary's chosen the good portion. Um, there's some stuff you'll look at, I think, with this idea of the good portion. The Lord is my portion. The Lord is my portion. That's repeated over and over in the Psalms. Uh, and so this idea of Mary choosing the good portion is choosing like time with the Lord. Like that is a good, that is a good thing to choose. That's a worthwhile thing to choose. Um, so I, look, I know it's kind of boring. It's a little bit different than normal. I mean, maybe I'm always boring, but like hopefully, <laughs> hopefully not like this one. But uh, this is just kind of an overview of how maybe you'll look at this as you go through to teach it. Um, I want to make sure that you'll have all this information so that you don't feel like unprepared going in on that youth led Sunday. I don't, that would be like the worst thing. If y'all went in on youth led Sunday and like felt like I just hung you out to dry, like that'd be horrible. I don't want to do that. So I hope that you have this information. It makes sense to you. It's, it's stuff that you're like, okay, yeah, I see why we would teach that. Uh, and if it doesn't, then like, let's talk about it. But I, I want y'all to have this. Um, as well. So I do have some questions just like maybe that you'll ask. You can go to the next slide, John. These are just questions that maybe you'll ask during the lesson. And so um, leaders in the, this is like, these are questions that are just kind of written throughout this, this little piece of paper here. They're not really like, I didn't single them out at the end like I did up here, but um, maybe I can take a picture and text it to you or something if that'd be helpful. But I think let's do the uh, high school and junior high group again, like last week. And just kind of get together and talk these things out a little bit. Is that cool? That did that group go well for y'all last week, junior high? I don't care what the high scores have to say. Uh, 
All right. Well, let's let's separate. Let's break out into that. Just to talk through this stuff just a little bit. Kind of talk about how you might talk uh, about this with people as you teach it and stuff as well. Yeah. Let me pray for us real quick, and then we'll go. Dear Lord Jesus, thanks for who you are. Thank you for your word. Thank you, God, that you have given us your truth and that we can teach it to others and lead others into your truth and into your salvation. God, we just pray that you would use this Youth Led Sunday to your glory, that you'd use each of these students to glorify you, to um, maybe even, God, just give someone an opportunity to lead someone to a relationship with you. Um, God, we, we love you and we praise you. And we thank you for the opportunity that you have before us and you've given us with your word. We love you. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.